Hello everyone and welcome back to CK3, I'm Lord Farman, and here we are with a second list of interesting starts in 867. This time we're going to talk about non-independent rulers, as in people who are not the top ruler of their realm, and uh, why they're interesting and fun to play. So the first one off is Aquintaine down here. You could alternately do Toulouse, but Aquintaine is probably the one that was a bit more historically interesting. So uh, first off, um, you start with more than one duchy under your control, which means there's going to be some slight succession issues, but you are definitely one of the more powerful lords in uh, West Francia. In fact, uh, assuming none of the Carolings come to the aid, it is very easy for you to overthrow the king of West Francia, or if you're in the mood for it, to leave an independence movement, break free, and then go on to form the Kingdom of Aquintaine, of which you control a fair starting amount. Uh, historically, the, the dukes of this area would go on to own a lot of France, marry into um, the Normans and the English throne, which would cause the Hundred Year War, or at least contribute to it, where England controlled about like half or so of France. Um, very interesting, historically, uh, a bit before its time now, but you could recreate it earlier. The second one is up here in Scotland, the Dutch High Chiefdom of Moray. The reason this guy is important and the reason Scotland didn't make my other list is mainly because the poor Scottish king here doesn't own that much land. Ruler of Moray has more land under his direct control than the, the King of Scots. It is very easy for you to overthrow him. You're also of the same dynasty, which is fun. So once you take over, you can get all that. He's also a coward. You're a little bit better at ruling than he is. Um, it's a fun start. Pretty easy to take over Scotland since your lord is weak. And then you have to deal with all the fun of dealing with the Vikings and getting out of the tribal era. But if you concede, of course, you get the delightfully fun Gaelic culture group, which has some nice stuff. Um, I really like some of these fishermen. Odd they have concubine stuff. The next one is back in the Caroling lands. In fact, it is a Caroling. It is the Duke of Bavaria, Prince Karlman. So it is actually, he's the heir to East Francia, as a matter of fact, which is a fun thing. Um, but he also controls a immense amount of land in Bavaria at the start, to the point that if he was independent, he could form the Kingdom of Bavaria almost immediately. If you play as him, you could try and become the King of East Francia as well. And uh, if you do that, you're well on your way to forming the HRE. Um, you need some Lothringen or Italian lands, but uh, you can at least get closer to forming Germania because you control a lot of it. Next one is one in Italy. So Italy is an interesting one because you have a French ruler over a bunch of Italians and Cisalpines and Lombards. This one, we're going to talk about Tuscany. Which, if you've played CK2, you will remember Matilda of Tuscany was very powerful. Well, it's probably one of her <laughs> ancestors up here. Uh, Duke Aldoberto uh, is one of the largest duchies in the Italian kingdom. Um, in fact, you control more than your starting duchy. Uh, it's quite easy to gain independence because you are... Um, uh, just Ita Italy is not particularly stable at this point in time. Be aware though that you are French, so if you want to, you can um, try and do a diverged culture, or you can swap to Italian. Um, the Italian culture group has some interesting stuff. It's got a Republican legacy here, which uh, you get a lot of uh, money and levies from Republican vassals. Downside is they're less loyal. But it's quite fun. Um, if you really want to kind of role play rebuilding the Roman Empire area, they're not a bad start. Spoleto is the other one right next to it. Or Spoleto, I don't know how to pronounce it. And um, yeah, have fun with that. Next one over here in the Umeids, or however you say it, it is actually this guy right here of the Maruinids. Um, He's the largest of the lords inside of the Emirate. Want to get out of that you may add uh, sultanate actually and uh, this realm is not particularly stable either um, you could also play as these guys up here the Quatimids 
Uh, I found this guy to be a slightly better start, just in the scheme of things. And you can either gain independence, you can try and steal the throne from your lord, who's not overwhelmingly powerful. Just be aware you are in a clan government, so there are family members that'll get involved. Um, I found it a fun start. A bit tricky getting free, but if you wait long enough, the area around you will collapse and you can gain land. Same as what you can do in East Francia, Lothringa, Italy tend to collapse eventually. Next one is a traveling over here to the Abbasids, but we're not going with the Muslim. In fact, we are going with probably, if you play the Abbasids, your most annoying vassal, the prince of the kingdom of Armenia. Why this is important? Well, Armenia is a kingdom, and there's not a lot of kingdoms inside the uh, Abbasid Sultanate, and you're also of a different religion. Plus, it's kind of fun being Armenian, because you also get the Eastern Roman legacy stuff. And uh, what that means is... You can probably launch and win an independence action war. Um, not The Abbasid ca uh, Caliphate is not particularly strong at this time. So if you do find one, either in the first generation or second, you can usually rebel and break free, at which point you've got the largest area up here. You've actually got a good starting power base uh, in general. And you can easily conquer this area. And if you want to try, you can then go on to swear loyalty to the Byzantines. In fact, if you're worried about reconquest, once you get independent, join the Byzantines. Um, you can just tend to go on and conquer this area while being protected by them. You may have to flip a religion though, um, which can be a bit frustrating. I know some people don't like swapping religions, but you can. Uh, and then you'll get into the whole Orthodox stuff, which is pretty strong still. Somebody at Paradox must like Orthodox because they're always doing pretty well. And uh, the next one over here is in the Byzantines. And it's actually the Duchy of Thessalonica. Uh, the reason this guy is important is he has quite a bit of land under his control. He's the uh, largest land holder uh, in the Byzantines at the start. And he's well positioned to expand southward. Um just in general into the rest of Greece, at which point he could try and break free or make a play for the Holy Roman Empire himself. Um, be aware there's not like a united kingdom of Greece here. In fact, the kingdom of which you are part of, the other half is owned by your liege. Um, but you can have fun with that. I found it quite easy to expand within the empire, slowly undermine the Byzantines and then make a play for the throne myself. Uh, it's quite fun. You start out with a good amount of lands. Uh, the development in this area is, well, better than average in the world. Uh, plus, once you get your hands on Constantinople, you'll be all set. Plus, you get the benefit of a nicely united culture and religion to work with. And if Bulgaria collapses, you're in the best opportunity outside of the Emperor to expand up into Bulgaria. Uh, it's very possible to be quite powerful as this guy. Um, if you expand enough, you could even form a kingdom within it, and then you'll get even bigger. So that's a fun one to mess around with. Uh, the next one, we're going to actually jump back to East Francia, and we're going to go with the Duchy of Angria, which is Catholic Saxon. So if you're kind of annoyed by playing as the Carolings, because they own, you know, most of Europe at this time, these guys could be an interesting start. They're Saxon, unlike the other French. Uh, you've got some half-decent traditions, but you are a large landholder. If you want, you could probably lead an independence movement, break free of East Francia, and go on to um, conquer some of this area, um, or make a play for the HRE, but it's always fun. Uh, it's good to play if you don't want to be a caroling in this start date, or Akmentain and stuff. Uh, the next one is also in this area, and we're going to go over here. You can play as the Duke of Holland, or rather the Jarl of Har Holland, because, in fact, you're Norse. You're a Catholic Norse, which is interesting, because the you get access to the Norse Viking uh, legacies. And you also start off with some pretty nice stuff. The big one I found was useful was Malleable Invaders. You can create a hybrid culture with... The Dutch culture, um, where you get some of the best benefits of all of them. Uh, the Dutch have some interesting stuff here. Uh, getting the polders and stuff is worth trying to snag if you stay in the area. Uh, it's also important to note that you start as a reasonably large lord. And if the area around you collapses, it's very easy for you to form the kingdom of Frisia. And uh, kind of role play a Dutch Viking. 
Um, if you don't form a hybrid culture, you probably want to convert to the Dutch culture just to keep an easier hold on your lands. Uh, overall, all not bad. It is worth trying to learn the language of the ruler of Lotharinga just so they like you a little bit more because you're going to have a pretty hefty uh, cultural acceptance penalty with them given time. And last, but certainly not least, is an area I haven't talked about too much. It's down here in Abyssinia. Now, some people would say, why don't you play as the king? Well, it's pretty simple. This is his brother, you're the heir of the kingdom, and you control more land than him. If you've ever tried to play Abyssinia, you will know it is a horrible start, um, mainly because either this guy turns on you, or the fact that you're surrounded by tribal rulers. Um in the area, which means they're gonna have more troops than you unless you can quickly develop, which is tricky. The religious area, uh, religious map in this area is a mess. Um, Abyssinia is not actually that huge, um, but it is possible to diplomatic, diplomatically vassalize these four people here and then expand this way and get some of these over here. Just be aware you're probably not gonna be able to vassalize every, anyone of the Muslim faith or the other faith that's dominant down here, this one, Wa, Ki, or whatever, is tough to do. Uh, there's also, however, there is some Jewish stuff down here if you wish to try and do some of that. Um, it's quite fun. You can, of course, build quite an empire down here. You can form one of the easiest empires in the game, Ajuran. Uh, Abyssinia itself takes a lot of work. If you do play as this guy, overthrow or kill your brother pretty early on, consolidate your power, and basically desperately hold on uh, so you can get stronger than most of the tribal lords in the area, none of which are your culture or religion, so they're going to be raiding and attacking you. At which point, once you're stronger, it's very easy to snowball through this area, conquer it all, and then start expanding northward. northward. I would advise not bordering the <laughs> mighty... Tulunids or the Abbasids at the uh, as long as you can help it because they could easily invade or attack you just build up your power base you're pretty isolated assuming you survive um, it's quite possible to develop land and uh, build up quite a power base the Ethiopian culture also has some interesting ones uh, I would advise you to try and get rid of isolationist if you can it does help with your stability and culture stuff but there's quite a few cultures in this area that you want to conquer, and uh, that just makes it harder. On the other hand, you can culturally convert them, but you've got strong believers, um, build a lot of temples, and you get a benefit for defending in hills and farm hill farms, which is nice. So uh, those are the 10 nations that are not necessarily independent, or 10 characters who are not necessarily independent countries, but are fun to play. So by all means, go forth, have fun, check out my other guides and stuff. I'm going to do a 1066 start uh, guide, or fun ones to play as basically, guide uh, very shortly. So look out for that. Hope you have fun with some of these nations and good luck. Bye for now.